Hey guys, it's Archie Luxury. Archie Luxury from the Archie Luxury channel, the Paul Pluter channel, and Archie Luxury Corporate. Guys, keep watching, keep watching. I need the viewers. I need the viewers, I need the subs, I need it. Like, subscribe, and tell your friends. Tell your friends, whether you like them or hate them. Just tell them anyhow. Archie Luxury on YouTube. Hey guys, it's your pontiff. It's your pontiff, Pontiff Pluter. Pontiff Pluter. And today, guys, quick, 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 whist, 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 watch, check. I'm wearing my JJ Lacout, Jega Lacoutre Reverso Grand Date. Guys, I want to talk about insanity. I want to talk about insanity. And I want to show you what I mean. Because I am completely nuts. And, you know, I, I'm somebody, I just want to share my insanity for wristwatches. And I've done a few really dumb things. And one of them was selling off all my steel sports roll-eye. And, you know, that was a pretty silly decision to, to do. And I'm trying to desperately get a Rolex again now. And I hope I do. I hope I do. But I want to tell you, man, I've got this. This is printed out. I printed this out at Office Works. That's my five. That's my five paddocks. I've got six, but one is a double up. And I've given that to a dealer to flick. Now, I got to tell you, I look at this photo. I look at this photo. And I really love my pieces. You know that? I really do. In fact, I'm talking to you now. I'm just going to get my keys and open my safe and pull out my 5196. Because that's the only paddock I've got at home at the moment. And I'm just going to pull it out and have a bit of a fondle as I'm talking to you. Here we go. Let's get it out and have a talk. So, i got to tell you, in all honesty, man... I think I'm completely nuts. I'm insane. I'm an insane collector. And, you know, I, 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 I gotta tell you, look at this. See, this is, this is one of my, that's one of them in, in the photo there. This is my, my yellow gold 5196. Absolutely love this watch. And I, I gotta tell you guys, I really did some silly things there. I got rid of Rolex, beautiful Rolex, and I did it to buy Patek, and you know, I, I gotta be totally honest with you, it probably wasn't the wisest financial move, the Rolex have gone up more, the Patek's, you know, Patek's aren't junk, they're not junk, uh, the genre, they're all dress Patek's, and I don't know what I was thinking. Did I thinking, you know, in a couple years time I'd get invited to continual cocktail parties? Did I think I would live on an ocean liner going around the world to eternity and I'd needed so many dress paddocks to uh, entertain older ladies who were going to pay my sea voyage fares? I don't know what the hell I thought. And I'm just fondling my uh, my 5196 as I'm making this video. But I want to tell you, I am completely insane. Completely, completely insane. That's my, 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 uh, my photo here. I could look at this photo for hours. I just look at it and see, ah, oh, look at that. I look at this photo and I see my 6006 in the corner. I think, what a beautiful white gold stunner. Modern sized, point clasp, uh, micro rotor, gorgeous piece. Next to that, I got a 5127. Um, this is just gorgeous. Love my 5127s. Reminds me of my 5107. And I look at that and I think, wowzers. Then I look at the front row, yellow gold, yellow gold, yellow gold. World time. Classic 5196 and an annual calendar 5035. And you know something? I think the insanity meter, I am certifiably insane. I desperately wanted more Patek Philippe. 
Why did I want so many? I don't know why. I really don't 100% understand why I wanted so many Pateks in my, my, uh, my life. Five of them. Five identical. But, well, they're not really identical. I got a world time. That's unique. Annual calendar. That's unique. And three Calatravas. One's manual wine. The other two, well, 5127 is white gold. It's unique. And the 6006 black dial and micro rotor. So they're all kind of individual. But I hope you can see the love. I just had the love for Patek. And it's kind of weird, you know. I'm, I'm making this video here. And I kind of always wanted multiple Pateks. That's what I really wanted. I sold out all my Rolex. I sold them all off. And that was probably a mistake, you know. The funny thing is, I sold them off and I thought, oh, it doesn't matter, I don't need Rolex. So I've been Rolexless for, for, for about a year now. The closest thing I've got to a sports watch is my JJ LeCoute in steel, my Reverso Grand Date, which... Is that a sports watch? Well, it's sort of sporty, but it's not really, is it? It's not really a sports watch. It's, it's a dress watch, Arch. And, I mean, why did I make that decision? Why did I make that decision? And it's, it's because I'm insane. I'm insane. I'm insane. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, when, when I say I am insane, what do I mean by that? Well, well let, let's have a look. Let's have a look here. So let's just turn the studio thing around and look what we've got. That's my shrine. That is my shrine, which that there shows you. That's my my book. This is my my glass cabinet here. That's got paddock stuff in it. Look at this. What do we got here? Look at this. We've got what do we got here? We've got a a, a, a plastic box which has got a dedication to the six zero zero six. We've got on the wall, we've got a watercolour for my Reverso and we've got a photo of my 5035. That was when I had to part with it for personal reasons and that's what I put on the wall as sort of like a funeral plaque. And inside this cabinet here, I've got Patek stuff. Look, Patek, Patek boxes and Patek catalogues. Look at that. And straps and all sorts of stuff here. This is what I... This is what I kind of, I kind of enjoy my Pateks, you know. This is what I enjoy. I enjoy having Patek Philippe's. And it's kind of, that's the center of my life is Patek Philippe. Patek Philippe. And, you know, I can't afford the expensive Pateks. I'm just a poor man from a poor family. And uh, I got to be honest with you. I have the love for Paddock. I always wanted Paddocks. I love you, Patek Philippe. You know, these, these little... Hi guys, Archie Luxury. And who do I recommend in America? In America, who do I recommend for quality pre-owned wristwatches? David SW, David SW, David SW. Go to davidsw.com. He is the best, the greatest pre-owned dealer in all of the United States of America. David SW, David SW, David SW. I love my paddock, Phillips. I love them to death there. You know, I kind of... The Grand Classics from Patek Philippe's. I was making this video and my, my phone died. And uh, that's why I, I had to uh, change. change. This is a different, different camera I'm using. Is it better without the light? Anyhow, what I wanted to say is, man, I just love Pateks. I love I love my Patek Philippe's. You know, I, I, I really do. I love I love them. I love them so much. 
And I've always wanted Patek Philippe's in my life. And now I kind of, you know, I'm at an age now. I'm an old, older, getting 48, getting into 50. Um, you know, I, I, I could look at my Patek picture for hours. I just love them. I love my Pateks. And I, I got to be honest with you. It probably wasn't the wisest choice cashing out a steel sports Rolex, considering the fact that I live in the tropics and it's bloody hot and every one of these straps turns into a schmacko, schmacko stick, a schmacko. That's a, a dog. It's like a beef jerky stick for doggies to, to chew. It turns into a schmacko, a schmacko stick. And i got to be totally honest with you, man. I probably, you know, I, I, I probably overreacted with the panics. I got a bit too carried away. But each one of these babies, I could tell you the story, you know. Each one of them is a huge struggle. Uh, you know, I look at my, my world time. Man, that world time, that was my inheritance in 2009. Plus, I sold all my watches to get it. And it started off as a 5107. Then I sold that. I got the gold sub. Then I got the white gold world time. I sold that and got the yellow gold. And that's my story. So that's kind of something I kept. The money stayed in there. Then I had the annual calendar. Oh my God. And I had to, I had to pay the pipers. You know, I had to trade my V serial number two-tone bluesy, and my Zenith El Primero for that annual calendar. Would I do it again? Probably not. But at the time, it felt amazing. It really felt amazing to do that. You know, it just felt, it felt really good to do that. So, I, I, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. And then we've got the five one two seven in the back corner and i actually have two five one two sevens and i wish i hadn't have traded my daytona for the first one but i did i did because i really wanted a five one two seven i didn't think i'd get another one easily now i got two but you know that was my daytona and also my daytona plus half a share in a tudor black bay burgundy there you go i had two thousand bucks in that and my my Maserati Blue Dial Daytona. That was silly. And then I look at my 6006, which that was actually before it was a 6006. It was actually my 5296. 5296. I traded three steel sports Rolex. My 39mm Explorer 1. My Air King 40mm. And my Milgauss. What a silly move that was. And then I look at my 5196. 5196, I sold my Explorer 2 Polar. I had that for years. I sold that. Um, I sold that and then I got, I used that money as a deposit for my 5196. That didn't pay for it, that was a deposit. And I love my 5196. I got it in my hand here. I'm fondling it and making this vid. I, I do love it. But all the dumb things. I've done all the dumb things, you know? I look at that. Was that a clever idea? Probably not. Probably not. Probably not. And I got to be honest with you. I gotta be honest with you. Um, I gotta be honest with you. I love them. I love my paddocks. I love them. I don't want to wear them necessarily. I just like to fondle them, look at photos of them, because I can't keep them all at home. Because you know, burglars, burglars, burglars. You know, burglars. Um, yeah. So I gotta be be honest with you. Um, I, I do love my Patek Philippe's. I love them. I love them. 
Am I nuts? Absolutely! Absolutely certifiable! Nuts! Bonkers! Absolutely bonkers! He's bonkers! Archie is bonkers! And, um... Bonkers! 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 Absolutely bonkers! And I gotta tell you, I, I really do love... I love him. I love I love them. I love them. I really I really do love my paddocks. They just I, I I'd never thought, you know, years ago I had two, I had two, I had my five one oh seven and a five oh three five and then now I got five other buggers. Five other buggers. So I've actually got six. I'm selling one to hopefully get some Steel Sports Rolex in. <clears throat> That's what I'd like to do. Get some Steel Sports Rolex in. I'd like to do that. I really, really would like to do that. So, yeah, that's kind of how it is. But, you know, I hope you can see the enthusiasm, the madness, the insanity. I'm completely bonkers. Completely bonkers. I just love... I love them. I, I, I really love them. I love my books, my catalogues. I'm, I'm, I'm really surprised. I don't, I don't know how I got five of the buggers. Six. I got six of them selling one to get some Rolex. But. So uh, that's, that's how it goes, guys. Okay, guys. Like, subscribe, tell your friends. Don't be afraid to put some comments below. And I will see you in the next one. Hey, guys. Archie Luxury. Who do I recommend for watches in Brisbane and Sydney? Vintage Watch Co. That's correct. Vintage Watch Co. in Brisbane Arcade in Brisbane and the Strand Arcade in Sydney. Vintage Watch Co. Brisbane and Sydney. Ronnie, I've known him since the late 90s. Ronnie is a top bloke. Luke is a great guy. Vintage Watch Co. That is who I recommend in Australia. Check out Vintage Watch Co. and the guys' amazing range of watches. They also do service and repairs. Vintage Watch Co. That is where the pontiff goes. You know, some of my paddocks came from Vintage Watch Co. That's right, guys. Vintage Watch Co.